what's going on everybody it's eta prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting handheld known as the play day and some of you out there might be familiar with this device it's actually been sold out for quite some time now but i finally received my pre-order and uh, i can tell you right now that this is definitely one of the coolest little handhelds on the market and i've been having so much fun with it it's a premium device i mean the way they put this thing together is top notch and it feels great in the hand it's a lot thinner than I thought it would be, but it's kind of the perfect size for a nice little pocketable device. At first, I was a bit skeptical. It seemed a bit gimmicky to me, given that, you know, all of the promotional material really focused on the crank over here on the side. And it's actually pretty fun to use, but that's just kind of part of the play day. There are a lot of great indie games here, and I've been having an absolute blast with this handheld. Aside from the crank over here, the first thing you might notice is we've got a black and white screen, but that doesn't take away from it, it actually adds to it. And the LCD they chose to use here is great because it's actually a sharp memory display. Very low power, and this came out before e-ink, but you can kind of think along the lines of that. It's great in bright light situations, but unfortunately there is no backlight here, so in the dark you will be struggling just a bit. And I did mention that the screen itself does add a lot to the console, keeps it very minimal, and uh, you know, when a developer is designing a game for the play date, they really have to keep this LCD in mind. Obviously, they're not going to be able to fill it up with bright, flashy colors, so when it comes to gameplay aspects, they can actually come up with some really amazing stuff, and there's some great games here already out for the play date. And one thing I'd like to mention here is, yes, they have included a headphone jack on the bottom of this unit. Now in this video, we're going to go over the specs, we're going to take a look at the interface and test out some games, but before we get started here... The sponsor of today's video is Ridge, and they recently partnered up with Hennessy. They've released some amazing looking uh, new wallets, they're Hennessy branded, they've also got the Ridge key case, Hennessy branded again, but that's not it, because without spending a dollar, you can actually head over to the website for a chance to win a brand new upgraded Hennessy Ford Bronco, or $75,000 if you prefer cash. You get one bonus entry for every $1 you spend on the site, and custom Hennessy branded products come with up to 1,000 entries for the giveaway. If you use my link, ridge.com forward slash ETA Prime, you'll get 10 bonus entries, and if you use my code ETA Prime, you'll get 10% off as well. And don't forget, if you're interested in their wallets and key cases, over on their website, you can save up to 30% by buying both of them together. Ridge wallets are designed with RFID blocking materials, plus there's a new optional AirTag attachment, so you'll never lose your wallet again. And the Ridge key cases can hold up to six keys, and with this, you don't have to worry about those keys jingling around in your pocket. Everything's nice and secure. And remember, if you use my link, ridge.com forward slash ETA Prime, you get 10 bonus entries for the giveaway. And if you use my code ETA Prime, you get 10% off as well. So if you've been considering getting a Ridge, now is the best time. When it comes to the play dates overall design, I'm really digging what they've done here. Very small form factor, fits right in your pocket, and you know the user interface itself is very satisfying to use. It's very tactile, and that's exactly what they were going for. We don't have a high resolution OLED display or a very powerful CPU here, and I think that's what makes this great. It really gets developers thinking about how to create fun games for this low-powered unit. And they also make it really easy for the average user to make their own games also. We'll take a look at that in a second, but real quick, I did want to go over the specs here. Now, when it comes to battery life, 14 days with the standby clock going, or 8 hours of gameplay. I haven't charged this thing up in 2 days, and I don't think I need to charge it up for a little longer here. When it comes to the CPU, it's rocking a 168 MHz Cortex M7 CPU, so it's a very, very low power. 16 MB of RAM, it's 76 by 74 by 9 mm thick, so it's a very small unit. 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, plus we have Bluetooth. Built-in mono speaker and a 3.5 mm headphone jack. It's got that sharp memory display with a resolution of 400 by 240. Built-in D-pad, A and B, we've got a sleep and menu button. It also has a 3-axis accelerometer built-in and the crank. But what makes the Playdate great are the games. What you're seeing on screen right now is Celeste. This is actually the Pico 8 version of Celeste, and it's been ported over to the Playdate, obviously. It performs really well. You can pick this up on itch.io if you want to. It's actually free, and it works really well here on the Playdate. And another thing that's worth mentioning here is if you end up buying one of these, you will get 24 free games. They actually set this up to uh, receive two brand new games every week. But since the play date has been out for a little while, you can opt to get all 24 games up front if you want to, or you could wait it out. It's really up to you. 
Okay, so I've just swapped over to the Playdate Mirror app. You can download this for Linux, Mac, or Windows. Plug it in over USB Type-C and you can mirror your screen. You can also set up an external controller and all the games you see here are free. And I've also sideloaded a few games. And uh, there are a couple of emulators floating around. I found a few Game Boy EMUs, but a lot of the stuff that I've tested is a bit slow right now. Heading over to Catalog, this is our built-in store. 99.9% .9 of these are from indie developers, and uh, they cost anywhere from a dollar up to, I think the highest one I saw was about nine dollars. This is one I'm thinking about picking up. It's six bucks, and I'll probably get it. But yeah, there's a lot of great stuff here in the catalog, and there's also some free games that you can download directly from here. Or you could head over to a third-party site like itch.io and download some community-made games. We'll take a look at that in a second. But I did want to show some gameplay off. And, uh, you know, I do test out a lot of handhelds, a lot of bigger, expensive handhelds. This thing is coming in at $199. It's up for pre-order right now. It's kind of been hard to get your hands on, but I've been having an absolute blast with this thing. And, you know, when the play date was originally announced, I thought it was a bit gimmicky having that crank on the side, but that's just kind of a tiny part of it. You can definitely integrate it with some of these games if you're a developer, and a lot of them do require using the crank. And it's actually a pretty cool experience, but I think what makes the Playdate great are the games. I mean, there's some awesome indie developers creating some amazing games for this. And of course, a lot of them you will have to buy. We do get that season pass, which gives us a ton of great games right off the bat. But personally, I don't mind supporting these smaller developers if they've got a great game. And uh, graphics here are awesome with a lot of this stuff. The music is outstanding, and one of my favorite games right now is called Zipper. We'll move over there real quick. It's actually really cool. I call it Zipper Samurai. It does come free with the uh, Season 1 games they offer you when you buy a play date. Very simple game, but I've been having a lot of fun with this one. Whitewater Wipeout is another great one, and you do use the crank to play this one. It's taken me some time to kind of get used to it, and I'm still not used to it. I keep wiping out here, but uh, it has been a blast playing this one. And when you initially install a game, whether you sideload it or buy one from the catalog, you get this little unwrap animation, which I thought was pretty cool. This is one that I just purchased from the catalog known as Necro Crisis, and if you're into, let's say, House of the Dead, then this is kind of perfect. Those undead freaks won't know what hit them. I'll put an end to this Necro Crisis. So you're going to navigate with the D-pad, and then you're going to fire and reload with the uh, crank on the side of the play date. This is awesome. I love what they've done here. Obviously, an on-rail shooter isn't a new idea, but putting it on a little handheld like this with the crank on the side really kind of makes it a different experience. I think this is so cool. But I'd say one of the best things about the Play Day are the community games. Over on itch.io, they do have a full section, tons of free games to choose from, and these are made by people like you and me. There's a lot of great stuff here. I've seen a bunch of D-makes, and uh, overall, there's some really cool stuff here. Tons of games for free, and if you want to create your own, you can head over to the official Playdate website and download their SDK, or you could use something like Pulp. So if we just go to try it now, this is an easy-to-use online game maker. So if we go to our room, we've got a little demo set up here, and uh, let's just say we want to change how our player looks. Create your pixel based characters right here. They've also got a built in chiptune maker so you can add your own music. This is pretty cool and uh, I definitely want to get into this a little heavier. The SDK is definitely going to be more advanced, but if you just want to use this to try it out, you can definitely do it. And of course, I wanted to show off a little bit of emulation. So we're going to be using Play GB. You can download this from GitHub and it does Game Boy games on the play date. You're going to use the crank for start and select, and right now we've got Adventure Island. As you can see, it is a bit slow. Definitely needs some optimizations. And of course, you know, when it comes to this M7 CPU we have here, it's only running at 164 megahertz. But with optimizations, somebody could definitely get Game Boy running at full speed on this. It's just going to take a little bit of work.
So after using this for a couple days, I can safely say that this is definitely one of the most interesting little handhelds we have on the market right now. And it is up for pre-order on the official Playdate website. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a link in the description. But I personally do love what they've done here with the minimal design, the minimal specs, and it really does bring you back to the best thing about gaming in the first place, and that's the games. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at the play date. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you've been interested in. Have you pre-ordered it? Do you have one? Let me know. And, you know, if you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on the play date, or if you've created a custom game that you want me to test, leave a comment down below. And like always, thanks for watching.